Welcome back, students. Today we'll be talking about concatenation. That's a vocabulary word, so if you haven't already, you might want to start keeping a list of uh, every time I say something's a vocabulary word. You might have noticed that's showing up on tests. So uh, concatenation, what does that mean? Well, here's a little hint. If we have the literal text hello plus the literal text world, it would become hello world. Well, that's generally concatenation in a nutshell. Concatenation means adding together two pieces of text. We use the same symbol that we use to add together numbers, but we use a different term for it. Rather than addition, this is called concatenation. Because really, what does it mean to add a word plus a word? So it doesn't make sense to call it addition. Since it uses the same symbol, we'll have to uh, pay close attention to recognize when Java is doing addition and when it's doing concatenation. They use the same symbol, so it's hard to tell which is which sometimes. So looking at this example, we have concatenation occurring inside of a print line statement. What are we going to print? We're going to print the concatenation result of hello concatenated with world. Put those together and you get hello world and it would be printed to the screen. Simple, right? But why even bother with that? Why not just say print line hello world? Well, here's why. Um, yes, it seems like maybe it's more complex on the surface, but whenever you start uh, mixing data types, you can see how beneficial this would be. Let's say you wanted to print the score of your game to the screen. You could have an integer called points that has the value of 100, and you want to print a statement that says you have 100 points. Well, without concatenation, what you've learned so far is to do it like this. Print you have, then print the value of points, then print line points, period, and go to the, yeah, I would take it to the next line. So that's three lines of code just to print one sentence, you have 100 points. With concatenation, you could join all of it together into one single efficient line of code that just reads, you have, and then we concatenate onto that the number of points, and then we concatenate onto that the final word points. So it inserts 100 in for the variable and puts it all together in one string and prints that to the screen. So now we can handle that simple task with just one piece of code. Now notice in this example we have concatenation occurring between a string and points as an integer and here's another string. So we have literal text in string form, integer, literal text in string form, concatenating them together. You might have noticed something like that in the previous set of notes. I'm going to jump back to old notes. Uh, in lesson three you saw a slide that looked like this where you're mixing data types and you didn't know exactly what this meant at the time, uh, whenever I said more on concatenation later, we're mixing strings and integers in that previous example, so the result is going to be a string. You can also mix strings and doubles and the result will be a string. More on this stuff later. Alright, back to our notes. Here's concatenating with variables. A simple example, age is 100, and then you concatenate you are with age and it puts it together we concatenated a string with an integer and our new data type that we got was a string that we could print to the screen. I'm going to do my best to say concatenation every time I see concatenation occurring uh, but I might sometimes slip up and say plus but uh, that's only because I'm seeing the plus symbol not because we're doing addition. Remember concatenation is not addition it's different it just uses the same symbol. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say I have a variable called x and I give it a value of 10 and I want to print to the screen a message that says x equals 10. Well here's how you could do that. Let's create a new string that would uh, result from concatenating a literal piece of text with a variable. So if I concatenate this label x equals with the value of x which is 10 it puts these together into a new string that we then print to the screen and here would be our result. 
Notice that this is in quotation marks because it's literal text. We want it to print exactly like that. And this is not in quotation marks. It's a variable. We want it to be replaced by the value inside of the variable. Down here in this example, we have a variable y equals 20. And if we said to print line like this, where y equals is in quotation marks, and we concatenate that string with y in quotation marks, it's going to print y equals y probably not what we wanted. If we put the variable inside of quotation marks, it treats it as the literal string. Notice how it turned green. Turning green is a clue that you're dealing with literal text. It's not going to be replaced with a uh, variable value. It's going to be printed to the screen as is. You can also concatenate a string with a string. So if we have name equal to Frank, then we could say hello concatenated with the name and it would replace it and put hello Frank. Remember that Java has to follow the rules of order of operations, so PEMDAS applies. Concatenation is still a plus symbol, so it follows in the same order as addition. So concatenation and addition have the same priority, I believe. So looking at this example, A is 4 and B is 6. What would happen if we printed this to the screen? Well, we have parentheses around A and B over here, so uh, order of operations says that parentheses are going to occur first. So it'll plug in my 4, it'll plug in my 6, it'll do that addition and get 10. Then we can handle this concatenation where it concatenates this literal with our result 10 to get this output. If we didn't have these parentheses, what would happen? Well, we have two plus symbols now, and plus symbols always have the same priority, so it's going to handle them left to right. So the first thing it'll do is this part. It's going to say, all right, we have a literal string concatenated with a value, an integer value. So it's going to say uh, the new string will be a plus b equals 4 and then it's going to concatenate on another value for b, which is 6, and it actually prints to the screen like this. a plus b equals 4, 6. Not at all what we wanted to occur. So that's why those parentheses are important. I've got another slide that shows you some examples of uh, order of operations with concatenation. You'll definitely want to take a look at them, spend some time looking at these in your notes. And this is very similar to that previous example that I showed. In this one, it prints 6 hello, and in this one, it prints 4 2 hello. Make sure you really understand why it's doing that. Take a look at the parentheses. Do you know what's going on in this one? Remember what we talked about in math about integer division last time? This is a common mistake a lot of beginning programmers make. Remember that division has a higher priority than concatenation. So the first thing that occurs is this. 4 divided by 6. 4 and 6 are both integers, so it's going to do integer division and your result is going to be an integer. Even though we know 4 divided by 6 is 0 0.6666, it's going to truncate everything after the decimal and just leave us with the result of zero. Then we concatenate that zero with hello and you get an answer of zero hello. So that's about as complex as we're going to get with concatenation right now. It's really not that big of an idea. The only thing that uh, trips people up is the order of operations. So let me help you get started with your next lab set. All right, I've got lab four opened here. Let's open up BlueJay. I've been skipping this step, but I want to show it because a lot of people are making a mistake. Uh, you don't want to open up a previous project. You want to create a new project whenever we do a now, new lab set. So I'm going to do new project, and I'm going to call it lab for demo. You would want to call yours lab for salaries, and make sure you're saving it into your H drive. So now I have that brand new project, and it's empty. I don't have all of my junk from previous labs in here create a new class with main called practice problems as it tells you to name it here 
and later on in the lab it says that I'm going to need one called salary. So I'll go ahead and set that class up now. Blank class with main called salary. There we go. Open up practice problems and let's throw some code in here. For problem one, it says we're going to declare two string variables, greeting one and parent one, and set them equal to hi and mom. And notice, be real careful about what you're seeing inside of the quotation marks. Let me zoom in on that. The quotation marks should be typed in exactly as they are there. Problem one. New string called greeting one set it equal to high comma space and then another string called parent one and set that equal to mom write the code to print the concatenation of the two variables so that we see hi mom System dot out dot print line greeting one concatenated with parent one close parentheses. Notice I don't have any quotation marks in here. I just want to grab the two values. I'm not actually including any literal text in this print line statement. Compile, no mistakes, run it. And there we get hi mom. Some of you when you run this code might notice that instead you get something like this. Hi mom. That would mean that you forgot to put your comma inside of the greeting and the space inside of the greeting. Now let's look at problem two because it tries to trick us a little bit. It says declare two string variables, greeting two and parent two. Okay, so that's going to look pretty similar to this. Let me copy paste. Instead of greeting one, we have greeting two. Instead of parent one, we have parent two. In this one, it says that greeting should be good morning. Notice there's no comma or space in it. Good morning. And dad. Using one print line statement, write the code to print that. Well, that's just a concatenation of those two, right? So I can do something very similar to this line. Let's copy paste it. Do greeting to parent to compile. Run it. Here's what we get. Good morning, dad. But that's not exactly right. We don't have the comma, and we don't have the space, and we don't have the exclamation point. Some of you might want to go in and do this, but then you're not really following the directions. It says that the uh, string should be equal to good morning. There shouldn't be a comma and a space in there. So we can't do that to solve our problem. So we need to go to another solution. We need to add the comma and the space here in our print line statement. So after greeting two, we want there to be a comma and a space. So I can tell it I want to concatenate a literal piece of text that has comma space. So let's take our greeting and then let's put on top of that comma space and then we can put on uh, the parent and then after the parent we're supposed to have an exclamation point so after parent 2 I can concatenate literal text of an exclamation point and so there's our new line of code there's a lot of concatenation happening here two variables and two pieces of literal text compile run there we go now we're producing the output that it was asking for so in this one there's not a whole lot of practice problems but the app that you do second is a little bit more complex than anything you've done before so take your time take a look at the sample output because when you're done it should be generating output that looks just like this all right good luck everyone enjoying my class smash that like button don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitface. But hey, that's just a tutorial. A computer science tutorial. Thanks for watching.